Hello everyone, this is Dr. A and for today ay pag-usapan naman natin yung ating mga rational numbers in algebra. Words are definitely important sa mathematics dahil kung naiintindahan natin yung language of mathematics, mas magiging madali yung ating pag-unawa ng mga problems involving rational numbers. Ano nga ba ang mga rational numbers? Ang rational numbers ay isa sa mga terms na ginagamit natin kapag ang number na nakikita natin or expressions ay in fraction form. So by definition, the term rational numbers refers to any number that can be written as a fraction form. At lahat ng mga numbers ay pwede natin i-represent in fraction forms. Mm -mm. Let's back down a little bit. Hindi lahat, but karamihan ng mga numbers natin ay pwede natin isulat in fraction form. Tulad halimbawa ng integer like 4. So ang 4, alam natin na siya ay whole number and also an integer, pero pwede natin siyang i-rewrite into a rational number by introducing a denominator of 1 doon sa ating integer. So from 4, pwede natin siyang i-represent as 4 over 1. So kung meron tayong 25, pwede natin siyang i-represent as 25 over 1. At kung meron tayong negative 8, pwede natin siyang i-change or i-represent as negative 8 over 1. So yan yung ating mga rational numbers, which is a fancy way of calling fractions. Fractions, so kung fractions ang pag-uusapan natin, may mga iba't ibang types tayo ng fractions. At ang unang fraction natin ay ang fraction in reduced form. At reduced form yan dahil alam natin na si 2 over 3, 2 is prime and 3 is also prime at hindi na natin siya ma the breakdown into smaller value or smaller number dahil yan na yung kanyang reduced form. At kung meron tayong reduced form, meron din tayong not reduced form tulad ni 4 over 6. Hindi siya reduced dahil alam natin na si 4 over 6 ay pwede pa natin masimplify into 2 over 3 by factoring out 4, factoring out 6, canceling out the common term which is 2, at ang matitira sa atin ay 2 over 3. Meron din tayong mixed numbers tulad ng 5 and 1 fourth or 8 and 1 seventh. At yan ang mga tinatawag nating uh, whole number and a fraction na pinagsama kaya siya tinawag na mixed numbers. At meron tayong improper fraction which is also another representation of mixed numbers dahil si 6 over 4. Napapansin natin na yung ating number on top or yung numerator natin ay mas malaki kesa sa denominator or yung number at the bottom, kaya siya tinawag na improper fraction. So, lahat ng mga fractions na kung saan ang numerator ay mas malaki kesa sa denominator ay tinatawag na improper fraction. At meron siyempre tayong integers and whole numbers na pwede natin i-represent into a rational form by introducing a denominator of 1 doon sa ating mga integers or whole numbers. At kung meron tayong whole numbers at integers at fractions, kaya din nating i-represent yung ating mga rational numbers into its decimal form. At isa sa mga dahilan kung bakit natin chine-change ang mga fractions into decimal form is tulad halimbawa kung i-place natin ito sa ating number line, mas madali nating mamamap or mapaplace yung ating fraction sa ating number line which is usually marked by integers kapag ito ay in decimal form. So si 7 over 25 ay gagawin natin into its decimal form at tandaan natin na ang salitang percent ay per 100, so ang cent ay another term for 100. So pagka nakakita tayo ng word na per, alam natin na nag no notate tayo ng fraction tulad ng 7 over 25. At ang 7 over 25 ay pwede natin i-change into its percent form by changing our denominator into 100. And it's going to be a little easier dahil alam natin 
to make 25 into 100, all we need to do is to multiply it by 1 para i-change lang natin siya in its form, pero yung value niya ay hindi mag-change. At ano ba yung other representation of 1 na may denominator of 25? Yun ay ang pag-multiply natin by 4. So, pag minultiply natin yung ating 7 over 25 by 4 over 4, which is also 1 in mathematics, mag-change na tayo into 7 times 4, which is 28, and 25 times 4, which is 100. At now, nakabuo na tayo ng percent. Bakit tayo may percent? Dahil meron na tayong per 100. So, ang ating 28 per 100 is actually 0.28 in decimal form. Dahil ganyan natin chine-change yung ating fraction form over 100, it's going to be 0.28 kasi from 28 we move our decimal value to units papunta dito sa left, kaya meron tayong 0.28. So that means yung ating 7 over 25 ay approximately equal to 0.28 by using this method. At itong method na ito ay pwede lamang sa finite set of fractions tulad ng 7 over 25. At tandaan natin, percent means per 100. So, hahanap lang tayo ng paraan kung paano natin magagawang 100 ang ating denominator. So, kung meron tayong 7 over 25, to make our denominator equal to 100, we multiply 7 over 25 by 4 over 4, which is basically multiplying it by 1, Pero, na-modify natin yung itsura ng fraction natin into 28 over 100 or 28 per 100, also known as 28% or 0.28. So, ito yung ating isa sa madaling paraan ng pag-change ng fraction into, it de into its decimal form. So, tingnan natin kung pwede natin gamitin yung technique na to sa ating mga examples dito sa rational numbers natin on the list. So, meron tayong 4 over 10 at si 4 over 10, sabi nga natin doon sa ating technique, kung si 4 over 10 ay magagawa natin 4 over 100, we'll be able to change this into its percent form easily. So, how are we going to do that? Meron ba tayong number that we can multiply to 10 to make it equal to 100? Meron at yun ay si 10. So, pag nag-multiply tayo ng 10 over 10 kay 4 over 10, 4 times 10 is 40, 10 times 10 is 100, so meron na tayong 40 per 100 or 40 per cent. At si 40 per cent is represented by this decimal form when we convert it into decimals. So si 4 over 10 ay equal to 0.40 or 0.4, at parehas lang siya ng value, at dito natin na-convert ang ating 4 over 10 by multiplying it by 10 over 10, kaya meron na tayong 40 over 100. Now, tingnan naman natin kung kaya natin i-change si 7 over 50. Si 7 over 50, kaya ba natin siyang i-change into something over 100? Yes, kayang-kaya natin yan dahil ang gagawin lang natin is to multiply our denominator by 2. So by multiplying it by 2, 550 times 2 is 100, 7 times 2 is 14. So meron na tayong 14 per 100 or 14%. So kung meron tayong 14% to change it into decimal, we'll have point. 14. So, 7 over 50, ay pwede natin i-represent into decimal using this method. So, ang number or uh, fraction na ginamit natin ay si 2 over 2, dahil si 2 over 2 is also equal to 1. Pero, since kailangan natin i-change or i-modify yung ating fraction into a denominator of 100, ginamit natin si 2 over 2. So, ito yung technique natin dito. Now, tingnan naman natin kung kaya natin i-change si 7 over 40 into something over 100. Can you think of an integer 
na pwede nating i-multiply si 7 over 40 kay 100 para magmukha siyang something over 100 or something per cent. And your guess is as good as mine. So, wala na tayong pwedeng gamitin na integer na mati-change natin yung denominator into 100. Kaya, gagamit tayo ng special case para kay 7 over 40. So, how are we going to do this? Si 7 over 40, I am uh, process na gagamitin natin is to convert this into a quotient similar to this one. Dahil ang 7 over 40, it means 7 divided by 40. So we're going to be performing long division to be able to solve this problem. So sometimes, tulad ng karabihan sa mga math problems, may mga math problems na mabilis sagutan, at may ilang mga math problems din na kailangan ng time and patience tulad ng problem number 3. So let's start using our patience in converting 7 over 40, which is also 7 divided by 40, into its decimal form. And how are we going to do that? We're going to use long division. So 7 divided by 40, it means 40 inside 7. So gagamitin na natin si long division. So medyo mahaba-haba ito. Kaya umpisahan na natin. So si, si 40, hindi pwede kay 7. So gagawin natin siyang 7.0. At si 70, pwede nang gamitin kay 40. So 40 divided by 7. Ilang 40 meron sa 70? Meron tayong 1. 1 times 40 is 40. And we subtract it. 70 minus 40 is equal to 30. At magdagdag tayo ng 0 para makuha natin yung ating close approximation ng 7 over 40 into its decimal form. So, meron na tayo ngayon 300. Ilang 300 meron sa 40. So, i-divide niyan. So, make sure that you know your multiplication table really well because it will really help you in your long division. So, ilang 40 meron tayo sa 300. Meron tayong 7. 7 times 40 is 280. And if we subtract 300 to 280, 300 minus 280 is equal to 20. And 20 divided by 40, hindi pa rin pwede. So magdagdag pa tayo ng isa pang zero. So 200 divided by 40, ilang 200 may, meron kay 40, meron tayong lima. 5 times 40 is 200. And if we subtract it, it will equal to zero. And ito na ngayon, yung 7 over 40 into its decimal form, which is 1, 0.175, or another way of writing it is 0 0.175. So ito, yung long divisions na ginagamit natin para makuha natin yung decimal form ng ating rational number. Medyo mahaba? Yes, dahil tulad nga na sinabi ko, minsan ang mga math problems natin ay madaling Matapos sagutan at minsan, it would take us a little while to be able to complete our work. That's why one thing that math is teaching us is the value of patience and persistence. And also, tagdagan natin ng accuracy. Alright, so we did long division and we're able to produce 0 0.175. And we know that our remainder is 0, kaya titigil na tayo at alam na natin na approximated value ng 7 over 40 is equal to 0 0.175. So, ganyan natin ginagamit yung method na ito kapag ka hindi na tayo makakapag-isip ng uh, integer or whole number na pwede natin i-multiply sa denominator for it to change into 100. So, tingnan natin kung pwede natin gamitin yung technique na yan dito sa ating 1 all over 12. So, si 1 over 12... Unfortunately, wala tayong integer na pwedeng multiply kay 12 para maging 100. So, gagamitin natin uli yung ating method kanina. So, magdi-divide uli tayo. And let's see how 1 over 12, which can be represented as 1 divided by 12, ay ma-change natin in fraction form. So, si 12 sa labas, si 1 sa loob, at hindi kayang pumasok ni 12 Kay 10, kaya meron tayong 0. 0 times, 10, um, 0 times 12 is 0. So, magkakaroon tayo ngayon ng 10. And add tayo ng 0 dito. 
at C100, pwede na nating i-divide or i-divide C12 si by 100. So, pwede na tayong makakuha ng 8. Napapasok 8 na 12 kay 100. So, 8 times 12 is equal to 96. 96 minus 1 or 100 minus 96 is equal to 40. So, si 40, kailangan natin siyang i-divide kay 12. So, 100 minus 96 is 4. So, nagdagdag tayo ng 0. So, just to have a marker right here. So, ilang 40? Meron tayo kay 12. Meron tayong 3. 3 times 12 is going to equal to 36. And 36 or 40 minus 36 is equal to 4. So, magdagdag tayo ng another 0. Dahil hindi kaya natin i-divide si 4 kay 12. Or si 12 kay 4. So, na meron tayong 40. So, ilang 40 or ilang 12 meron kay 40? Meron tayong 3. 3 times 12 is still 36 minus 40 minus 36 is going to give us another 4. At mapapansin ninyo na on this particular point, umuulit lang na nagiging 40 yung ating uh, difference. And in this case, alam natin na magiging repeating ang ating number after 3 kaya we will stop here dahil alam natin ngayon na si 1 over 12 ay approximately equal kay 0.0833333 at walang katapusang 3 ang mabubuo natin and to be able to write this easily pwede natin siyang gawing or lagyan ng symbol na ganito at ibig sabihin nito, ito ay non-terminating decimal. So yan yung pamamaraan ng pagkuha natin ng 1 over 12 into its decimal form. So we perform long divisions at napansin natin na umuulit na lang yung ating difference by 4 at yung pattern natin ay magiging pare-parehas lang kahit ilang ulit natin itong gawin. Kaya pwede na tayong tumigil at is simplify na si 1 over 12 ay equal to 0.083 with a number on top of 3 to signify na this number is non-terminating. So, yan yung pwede natin gamitin or isa sa mga pwede nyo ma-encounter kapag nag-change tayo from fractions or from rational number into its decimal form. So, ituloy-tuloy natin yan at kunin natin si 5 over 12. So, si 5 over 12, once again, gagamitin natin yung ating long division to be able to change 5 over 11, which is 5 divided by 11 into its decimal form. So, meron tayong 11 divided by 5. So, hindi pwedeng pumasok si 11 kay 5, kaya magdadagdag tayo ng 0. So, 50 ngayon yung gagamitin nating number. So, how many, how many 11s do we have with 50? So, we have 4 11s na pasok kay 50. 4 times 11 is 44. And 50 minus 44 is equal to 6. Magdagdag tayo na sa 0. Para ma-divide natin si 60 kay 11. And 60 divided by 11 is going to be ilang 11 meron kay 60. Meron tayong 5. 5 times 11 is 55. Subtract it. 60 minus 55 is equal to 5. And magdadagdag na naman tayo ng 0 para magkaroon tayo ng way na ma-divide si 11 at 50. So 50 divided by 11 will have ilang 11 meron kay 50. Meron tayong 4. 4 times 11 is 44. And if we subtract this, 50 minus 44 is equal to 6. And magdadagdag na naman tayo ng zero. At mapapansin ninyo na pagka inulit natin yung process, 60 divided by 11 will have 5. 5 times 11 is going to be 55. And if we subtract this, 60 minus 55 is going to be equal to 5. Magdadagdag na naman ng zero. Bring it down. And magkakaroon tayo ng 50. And when this happens, mapapansin ninyo na ito, 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 ay may pattern na nabubuo. So, ibig sabihin nito, walang katapusang ulitan ang mangyayari dito sa ating long division. So, pwede na tayong tumigil dito 
and conclude na si 5 over 11 ay approximately equal to 0 0.454 and non-terminating siya, ibig sabihin itong dalawang number na ito ay mag interchange lang para dun sa ating value of our decimal number. So, yan yung isang isa na namang um, pattern na kailangan ninyong ma-notice kapag ka naglo-long division, division kayo sa pag-change ng ating fraction into its decimal form. So, ito yung ating long division. Nagkaroon tayo ng pattern 60 and 50, 60 and 50, 60 and 50. So, now we know that 5 over 11 can be simplified into 0 0.5. 45 with a number on top. So, pwede natin gamitin yung last two digits, which is 454545. Five, 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 or pwede na kayo magdagdag at tandaan na yung inyong number above doon sa ating decimal uh, value kailangan nagre-represent nung dalawang numbers na umuulit, which is in this case, C4 and C5. At yan yung ating pamamaraan ng pag-change ng ating Rational number into its decimal form. Kaya ang ating number bender challenge for the day, gamit ang long divisions or yung ating method na ginamit nung impisa, paano nyo iti-change si 1 over 11 into its decimal form. And again, walang gamitan ng calculator, walang gamitan ng cellphone. Kailangan lang nyo lang gumamit ng inyong lapis at papel. At syempre, ang inyong multiplication table scale para masagutan itong problem na ito. At yan ang number bender challenge natin for today. Na minsan, madali natin nakukuha yung conversion ng ating fraction into its decimal form. At sometimes, we need to use different techniques na medyo matagal-tagal tapusin but with patience and accuracy, we'll be able to get the answer that we're looking for. This is Dr. E, and see you again next time. Bye!